Hi, I'm Andy Rickmer, and welcome to this episode of Scratch Cooking. Come into my restaurant at Crystal and Jewels in downtown Madison. All right, welcome to this episode of Scratch Cooking with me, Andy Rickmer, here at Crystal and Jewels. Um, I'd like to first start off thanking my, my customers and my guests for coming in and supporting what we do here. Uh, Crystal and I work really hard, so I just wanted to get that out there and say thank you. Um, but I hope you learned a lot over the last episode and made a couple pasta dishes. And for this episode, I know a lot of you have a lot of fresh garden vegetables coming on. And if you don't, uh, there's a lot of stands around town that, that sell garden vegetables. Um, but today, for this episode, I'm going to do what's called a gazpacho. And it's a, um, it's a cold soup um, from Spain. So what we're going to do is basically dice up all this 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 uh, produce right here it's gonna be a lot of knife work um, but you don't cook it you just kinda chill it down so let's get started alright so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna concasse this tomato and how you do that is you're gonna take the core out which is called sharking and I'll show you why it's called that at least that's what my chefs taught me but when you take it out it looks kinda like a shark's tooth but uh, you're gonna take that core out and then you're going to put a big X right here on the bottom. And what that's going to do, it's going to kind of let that water get underneath the skin and uh, start to release it. All right, and we're going to drop it right in the hot water, the boiling water, I'm sorry. But concasse really um, means uh, peeled, seeded, and diced uh, tomato or vegetable. Usually it's a tomato. But um, for this, I've done this uh, soup both ways. I'm gonna leave the seeds in this one because um, you can't really tell at the end with the onions and everything. I'll show you the true way to concasse a tomato. And from here on out, I am gonna put my gloves on because this food is gonna be ready to eat. Anytime you have ready to eat food, you kinda wanna glove up. All right, so now you can start to see this tomato's releasing its skin. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and put it right in ice water. Okay, so what this ice water is doing is this is just shocking it, so it just stops it cooking. And what I'm doing now is I'm, this skin, look how easy this comes off. And you can do this just like, just like this for all your like salsas if you don't want the skin getting in your teeth and stuff like that. Um, but uh, you could just discard this and I'm going to take a, a towel, a clean towel, and just kind of pat it dry. Just like that. And see, I didn't cook this at all. This is still real firm um, and that's what you want. So basically a concasse is a peeled seed in and dice. So to do a true concasse, like I said, I don't take the seeds out for this soup, but you would just cut it right in half like this, the core. And then watch this. Watch these, watch these seeds just come right out. See, you just, I'm just kind of squeezing them out. And it's real easy. And that's how you can keep your seeds out of your salsa and all that. But like I said, for this, for this, uh, for this soup, I, I put them right, right in the bowl with everything else. So now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start making like slices, like you're slicing them for a hamburger or something. Just like little quarter inch, stuff like that. And now what we're going to do is everything in this soup is going to get diced. And it's just going to be a lot of knife work. It's, it's no real cooking work, but it's a lot of, a lot of d knife work. So I got that all done. And like I said, this we'll have the recipe at the end, but uh, it's a pound and a half of tomatoes. I've already done some. You can do different colored ones. Uh, I just knocked some out before we started filming to kind of cut down on time a little bit but I'm just I'm just dicing these right up a lot of people come in the restaurant and ask me what kind of knife I use uh, this is a global it's a, a, a Japanese knife um, stainless steel I can sharpen it about once every two weeks and hit it on a um, knife hone once a week twice a week and you can just see how, how sharp it really is. So there's our tomatoes. Um, I got diced up. 
All right, so our next ingredient here, it's going to be a, uh, a pepper. And when you cut off these tops and bottoms, I just kind of save these back, and then this will go right in the blender. I just kind of, I don't even worry about how I chop these. I just kind of rough chop them just to help the blender out a little bit. But I'll stick, go ahead and just stick them right in your blender so that way you don't forget about them at the end. That's just extra flavor that you probably end up throwing away. But uh, like I said, uh, if you do this a whole or double recipe, you could use a whole pepper. But I take out the rib and kind of get a lot of this pith out of here. Do half. And I just kind of take that out right like that. Alright, so then that way you're left with uh, just uh, this nice flesh of the pepper. But I'm just going to julienne this down right like this real small thin and then we're just going to go straight across just like just like we did the the cucumber the sharper your knife is the easier this is going to be on you guys and then that'll go right in All right, next we're going to do a jalapeno. And you can add, you can do this at the end. I do it now because I know I like heat. Um, but you can do it however you want. At the end, you can add more. You, you can never really take it out, though. So um, I'd add it at the end so that way you guys can just kind of do your own. I'm only do, gonna do half for this. And I took the seeds out. And I'm just gonna just kind of mince this up real quick. Just put a real quick mince. And you always want to wear gloves whenever you're working with peppers, because after you're done, no matter if you wash your hands, I mean it helps, but any sensitive skin area on your body that you touch afterwards is going to be burning. And I know everybody that's ever been a chef in the kitchen has done it before. It's, it's no picnic. But uh, that's going to go in. We're going to do a, a medium clove of garlic. You can see this still has the skin on it. Um, I'll show you an easy way to take the skin off. You just kind of put your knife on it. Give it a real quick tap. One more, and, that, and it just falls right out of the skin. Discard that. I'm going to kind of hit it again, just to kind of bust it up, and then we're going to go real quick, right like that. Now you're in your home stretch of your gazpacho because everything's pretty much chopped up. Next thing is just putting all your liquid and your seasonings blending it up. Put a real quick mince on this. Right in. Alright, so I just got a, a half of a red onion here. Um, this will be your last ingredient that you chop. So I kind of just did cross cuts here. Um, and then I'm going to go not all the way through like this and then you're just gonna go straight down make small dices and they just kinda fall out you get the little end here that's got the little ones but I just always go back across it one good time and kinda just do like we did the jalapeno alright so that's all your chopped ingredients there. Now we're going to just add all of our liquid ingredients. Blend this up and we'll be ready to roll. Alright, so you can see we got all of our stuff here, a bunch of nice colors. Um, we're going to go a quarter cup of olive oil right in. We're going to go two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. 
two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, half teaspoon of cumin, I'm going to take the juice of one lime, and you can get these squeezers. I had people ask me about these squeezers here. You could get these uh, online. It kind of, you see how it's got the holes? It kind of takes the, holds the seeds back. It don't hold them all back. You'll get a straggler every once in a while. But uh, we'll just squeeze this lime real quick. One lime. Get our blender all set up. And it's already got your, your ends in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a measuring cup and kind of just mix it all up real good. Kind of just get everything incorporated. Then you're just going to do half the mixture right in here. And I just scoop it right out. Right like that. Maybe, you know, a little bit more. What a, what a, it, that's just going to be for texture in there. So however you want to do it. Now this is going to be a little loud, so bear with me. Get this real good. All right. And then what we're gonna do is just pour it right in here. Mix it all right back up. Make sure you taste your food at the end, guys. If you gotta see it, salt and pepper, everything. If so many people, restaurants especially, uh, have gotten away from seasoning food. It's not, you know, it, I don't even have salt and pepper shakers on my tables. But we season everything from our salad, tossing a little salt on the greens, to, to, uh, to our, our sauces. I mean, everything. All right, so I got this all seasoned up. I'm just going to take a spoon, kind of taste it. Yeah, a little bit more salt. That's good stuff. All right, now we're going to plate this. And how we're going to do this, I've got my bowl right here, is I'm just going to kind of pour it a little bit right like that. Make sure you get everything in there. I'm going to take a fresh basil leaf from our garden outside. It's been washed. I'm just going to do what, what's called a chiffonade, which means ribbons. Right like this. Real thin. And you can, add, you can add croutons to this, whatever you want. If you want a little bit of crunchy texture, croutons work good. But I'm, I just like to do it right in the center. You could do some Parmesan cheese on top. Uh, but if, if you, you know I like to keep it simple if you've ate here before. But uh, that's our gazpacho. Um, perfect for summertime. It's nice and cold, but I know I played this right now, but if you could let it sit in the fridge for about two hours uh, before you serve it or just put it on an ice bath, man, it's 20 times better on a, on a cool day or a hot day. I'm sorry, but uh, that's it. I appreciate you guys joining us again on, on Scratch Cooking. Uh, come see me at our restaurant, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.